What's up guys, Dan here, and today we're going to be going over the basics of overclocking your RAM. I'm going to be using the ASUS BIOS, but any other BIOS is going to work the same. It's just going to be some different menus, but the main things you need to look for, I'm going to show you those, and you'll be able to find those just fine in any BIOS. So, in this BIOS, I go to Advanced Mode, then I go over to AI Tweaker. So... Then I'm gonna go into AI Overclock Tuner. That's gonna show us our baseline RAM settings. So it, at stock, it's 3200 megahertz, 16 cast latency, 18, 18, 36. So we're gonna go to auto. And basically there's several different ways that you can get more performance out of your RAM. Uh, the first one is to tighten timings. Uh, generally, you'd up the voltage to tighten timings, and then there's upping the frequency and generally loosening the timings. So it all depends what you're doing. Uh, there's certain applications that you get better performance from tighter timings. Uh, in, in benchmarks, which are more my thing, I get better performance out of just higher frequencies. So for example, you might have a really tight timing on 3200 megahertz, but if I'm at 3600 megahertz with really loose timings in a benchmark, I'm going to get better results. So I'll show you an example, uh, some examples in a minute. Uh, first, I'm gonna go over some of the basic things you need to know about in here. So DRAM voltage, um, my RAM and most RAM uh, right now are they're going to be at 1.35 volts stock. Uh, the highest you want to run for daily usage is going to be 1.45 volts. You can go as high as 1.5 volts for benchmarking. Uh, if you're a professional benchmarker, then I'm sure you'll go higher than that. Uh, but if you are, you probably aren't watching this video. Uh, SOC voltage is the other voltage you have to change. Well, you don't have to. It can be beneficial to change it, uh, particularly if you're doing big overclocks rather than more mild overclocks. Uh, I usually switch the settings of my VRMs. Just change the bottom four in this particular motherboard, just the SOC related stuff uh, can be helpful. Uh, outside of that, DRAM timing control. So I'm, I'm not going to go into every single thing in here because that would be a, I don't know, 10 hour video. Uh, and I don't know that much about the uh, lesser, or yeah, lesser known timings. I mean, I know some, but like, for example, I know like some of these manufa motherboard manufacturers tend to put them high so I know I can drop them a little bit and I know uh, as a general rule the TRC can't be lower than pre and act time combined so 36 plus 15 51 but if you put that at 49 the TRC at 49, you'd have a problem. But anyways, we're not getting into that. Uh, cast latency, and basically just these top five. Those are the only ones you need to change. And for a general overclock, like let's say I was going up to 3400 megahertz, I would just do 18, 18, 18, 18, 36, see what it did. And then I'd start rolling back from there and seeing how I could tighten them up. I would also give more voltage. So, let's see. For example, let's say we were going to go to 3400. I'd go 3400, SOC voltage. Auto is going to be fine for this anyways, but I'll do it. I'll do a manual. 1.1 volts. DRAM voltage, I do probably 1.4. And then for timing, I think I'd stick with that. Uh, there's a couple other things in this menu. 
memory overclock fail count. That's pretty cool. So basically I can set that for four. Uh, highest setting is 10, I believe, but then I'd be here all day. Basically that means if you try this frequency and it fails to boot, it'll restart and try it again, and it'll do that four times. And what basically what that is doing is it's trying to get all of these auto timings down correctly. I don't know why I just enabled it. I meant to disable. Gear down mode I'll disable. I think that's all I have to disable. Uh, and we could run it like that. But I'm not going to. I've been able to get this at 3666. That's my highest on this RAM. Uh, it was very unstable. And... I'm sure this 3600 that I'll do on the fly will be too, but I'm going to show you how to do it. So I'm going to say at 3600, I'll just do 1.5. And then 1.15, let's say. I am going to, whoops. I am going to change these. Probably don't have to, but... You don't really have to know these options, other than they're pretty self-explanatory. Higher level is better, or well, hi yeah, essentially better. Um, obviously, higher again to some extent is better. Obviously, if they're putting 140% in red, it's probably best to stay away from that. Switching frequency, my motherboard goes up to 600 megahertz. I just put it at 500, extreme fa power phase control. It just doesn't hurt to do it, I guess, if, is why I did that. Uh, as far as 18, 18, 18, 18, 36 goes, I'm, I don't think at 3600 that would be stable at all, so I'm going to back these up to 18, 19, 19, 19, 39. I don't know if it'll be stable or not, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it. 3600, everything looks right. All right, we're gonna take a look and give it a shot. See if it boots. And it's working on it. Okay, there we go. Hopefully no problems here. Sorry, I kicked the camera. We're gonna skip disk checking. Okay. We'll log in. All right, we're in the system. First thing I'm gonna do is Cinebench. As long as it gets through Cinebench, I don't care because I'm not. I I don't use 3600 megahertz as an everyday overclock. I use 3400 because it's more stable and I get better timings. But more mostly it's stable, and I don't want to be playing a game or something and have it crash because that's pretty bad. We're just running CPU at stock here. And I have my fan profile set as silent because I'm recording, so it probably will not be the greatest score. If, I don't know if you can make it out on this screen, but my highest score is showing as 1935. That's at 4.25 gigahertz and 3600. I had a 1951, but... uh. I tried to run it a second time because I was greedy, and it so I wasn't able to save it because it crashed. But so, for example, it got through Cinebench perfectly fine. Where it's going to be interesting is just because, and this is part of the other thing I wanted to go over, just because it boots does not mean your RAM is stable in its overclock. So I use IDA64, AIDA64. You just go into Tools, System Stability Test. All right, 
and we're gonna go, we're gonna unclick everything and just check stress system memory. So let's see. I'm guessing it's not stable, but it, it's possible it is. Usually it'll crash pretty fast, yeah. So it automatically stopped it for me. Now it didn't crash the computer, the computer did not shut off, so that means my timings very likely just have to be pushed back, which I don't like because they weren't that crazy. I guess I could go 19, 20, 20, 20. But uh, that's just a general idea of how you go about changing and what you go about changing as far and as well as safe voltages to go to. Uh, I've seen a lot of people go above 1.2 on SOC because they don't know exactly what they're doing and uh, that's a good way to ruin your equipment so I highly recommend not doing that remember for daily usage do not go above 1.45 and for benchmarking I highly recommend not going over 1.5 unless you really really know what you're doing um, but I hope you learned something and if you have any questions please leave them below um, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe for my future videos. Have a great day.